Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a new stream. Welcome to a new week. Uh, and today uh, we are gonna do the AWS backend for the React Native application that we have started previous week. And uh, we have started a TikTok clone. So if you didn't see that video, uh, I would highly recommend go uh, check that out. Or if you are interested only in the AWS backend, that's perfectly fine. You can find the source code um, in the link in the GitHub repository. Uh, so what we are gonna do today, uh, let's quickly have a look. Um, not here, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna implement first of all authentication because that's a uh, important part of almost uh, any application that you're gonna develop uh, using React Native. Uh, so we're gonna uh, set up the AWS auto or Amplify with authentication that will give us uh, pre-made screens for uh, signing in, signing in, signing up, uh, forget password, and um, yeah, and much more. And you'll see how easy it is. Like it's 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 incredibly easy. I think it's like three or four lines of code, and at the end we have all these screens ready for us. After that, we of course need to save our data somewhere. And for that, we're gonna create a GraphQL API. Uh, we're gonna get into more details about like uh, the ins and outs and what is the GraphQL API. Uh, again, we're gonna set it up with AWS Amplify uh, and uh, the uh, API will save all the data to DynamoDB but that's also a lot of things are happening automatically. So at the end of the day, you don't even work with DynamoDB di directly. You just set up everything. Uh, you just write like, how will your, your models look? And AWS will take care uh, for you about everything else. So that's, uh, that's the awesome part. And lastly, uh, we need to save all these videos, all these files somewhere in the cloud. And for that, we're gonna use uh, AWS S3, uh, the storage solution from uh, Amazon Web Services. And again, you'll see that it's not very complicated to set it up and uh, record a video and then upload it there. So yeah, um, hello everyone. Uh, where are you coming from today? Where are you watching the stream? Um, thank you very much for joining and thank you for all the support you guys are showing lately. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's wait uh, a little bit for people to join and then we can start, um, to work. So guys, uh, yeah, what, what other important things, uh, I have to tell. So, uh, hi, Alexandra from Moldova. Uh, hi, Gabriel. Um, hi, Vivek. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> so, guys, yeah, if you're new new here, thank you very much for watching. Uh, on this channel, we are doing uh, this kind of uh, clones in React Native. And uh, also, we are using AWS for the backend. And I'm doing this because uh, I really think that uh, learning with project-based learning uh, is the best way to yeah to um, uh, learn any new technologies. Uh, because yeah, a lot of people I know, a lot of my friends are struggling with uh, in like a tutorial uh, life cycle, like where they watch tutorial after tutorial, but but they never start actually implementing something, and that's why I decided. Uh, to start doing these live streams uh, because that's how I learned all the technologies that I know um, that I know and that helped me get an internship at Amazon uh, so yeah just by doing things just by messing around by having problems and then trying to solve them by yourself uh, building an actual product that you can see and you can be excited about uh, yeah, it will make your life uh, easier and the process of learning a lot more fun instead of watching just some random, uh, yeah, to-do apps or, I don't know, uh, theory. So, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested, uh, please join our Discord uh, channel. Uh, the li link is down below. 
we have a great community where people are sharing their progress uh if they have problems um yeah the community is pretty helpful and everyone is helping each other and from time to time i also um try to help everyone who is having problems and yeah if you can also contact me uh, down below in the comments if you have any problems and i'll try to help uh hello from india hello Please teach us how we can add filter library as uh, TikTok. Uh, filters, you mean like uh, video filters and like photo filters, uh, things like that. If you're speaking about that, um, we're not going to do that today. I'm not planning to do that today uh, because we have a lot of things, as you saw, uh, planned for today. But maybe in future, if a lot of people are interested, maybe we can um, implement filters as well. Hello, hello. So guys, um, yeah, let's get started. And yeah, as I said, we're gonna implement authentication. We're gonna implement GraphQL API and the storage. But first of all, we are gonna start with a GraphQL API. And before getting into that, uh, like what is GraphQL API? Uh, GraphQL API is an alternative to REST APIs. And it's a syntax to define how uh, the data from a backend will be queried. And uh, usually the uh, advantages of GraphQL API is uh, the client is the one who decides what data uh, he needs and not vice versa. Like, for example, if you are asking data about posts, but, but you are interested only in the idea of a post and I don't know the image without any like comments without any I don't know users and stuff like that uh, you can do that with GraphQL by specifying like okay I need the post with ID and with an image and that's it uh, in REST API it's a bit different you say like I need uh, this post and they will throw at you everything that they know about that post that we have in the database and uh, also GraphQL makes it, make, makes it easy to aggregate different source of data and to aggregate uh, yeah, different types of data. For example, with one query, you can receive a post with all the comments uh, and uh, for each comment, you can receive information about the author of that comment. So it very easily for the client uh, aggregates all the data from different, from different sources from different database ta tables, from different, yeah, even a different APIs. So yeah, to better illustrate that, uh, here we, uh, I will show you what's the difference between a GraphQL API and a REST API. Here on the left, uh, we have a REST API. And let's imagine a situation, a usual situation for where in, in any like application with posts. Um, yeah, for example, there, there is a list of posts, which is the feed, and each post has comments, and each comment is submitted by a user, and that is an offer. So to render, for example, the Instagram or TikTok feed, where we render the post, we render three, three most common to, uh, mo top comments, and their uh, users, like image and username, we would have, first of all, to create um, a GET request, to send a GET request to the server to get all the posts. And for example, we receive back three posts. Then for each uh, each of those three posts, we need to create uh, to send one request for the comments. And that's like three other requests here for each of the posts. And then when we receive data about the comments, for each comment, we would have to query all the offers. So that's like more than 10, um, more than 10 requests to the server for uh, a situation where you have like three posts with each of them like three comments. Uh, on the other hand, having a GraphQL API, you can receive all this data just by doing one request and you will specify like, okay, I need I have a post with top three comments with their offers. And then GraphQL will aggregate all this data on its end and will return it to us in one request. And that's much more optimal uh, and more performant. 
And GraphQL uh, works based on a schema. So a schema uh, is defined by, um, in, in today's video, we will define the schema and we'll define how uh, each object will look like and how we will be able to query them, how we will be able to create them. So there are, um, yeah, custom types that we create, for example, uh, a type offer and the type offer has an ID, a first name, a last name, and a list of posts. Uh, this is an array. Uh, type post as well has ID, title, offer, votes. And also GraphQL schema contains uh, query and this is um, all the operations where we need to receive information from, uh, from the API. And this is very similar to a GET request in a REST API. It's like getting the posts, getting the, yeah, the users, getting everything, uh, anything you want. There is one more, which I don't have here, and that is a mutation. And a mutation is similar, is an operation similar to POST request uh, in a REST API. Basically, when we want to create something in the database, then we will run a mutation. For example, create POST, create user, add comment, delete, update, and so on. So yeah, this is a very important part because on our end, today we're gonna write only this schema. And based on this schema, uh, AWS Amplify knows how to create all the resources, everything like database and for each type, for example, for an offer, for a post, it will create a separate table uh, and so on. So a lot of magic is ha happening behind the scenes, but this uh, schema definition, uh, is something that we will need to know. And um, yeah, that's a very short introduction into GraphQL. If you want to know more, definitely check out more resources. There is a lot of uh, resources that you can find on Google, Medium and, and YouTube. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into uh, um, initializing our Amplify because um, that's what we need to do before uh, adding the API. So I'm not sure, I think I'm missing. Um, no, I'm not, I don't miss, it's here. So first of all, let's set up the AWS Amplify project. Uh, and you can find that by accessing the, you can find more information how, you, how to install AWS Amplify. On this link, it's docs.amplify.aws and there you'll uh, press on start and then you'll choose React Native. So here is uh, the first tutorial. Um, before starting, you would need to have Node.js installed on your system. And uh, for this chapter, I'm gonna go uh, quickly through it, but I expect you to do it uh, yourself and I expect you to have this uh, installed on your system before getting in uh, to the next step because that would take us some time if we would do it uh, live stream and I have them already installed. So you would need Node.js, NPM, Git. Uh, yeah, initialize a new React a native application. We already have one. Uh, then you would need to sign up for an AWS account. So to create one, you can access this link um, an AWS account uh, can be created for free. However, you need to uh, attach your credit card. Uh, most of the services that we are gonna use in this uh, in the tutorial and that you are gonna use while you're learning, uh, most of them uh, have free tier. Even here they explain. And the free tier means that, okay, you have like a, a limited, amount of resources that are uh, given to you for free uh, for you to, yeah, to learn and to test them out. Uh, but don't forget to yeah, delete those resources uh, when you're done to be safe. For example, uh, we already created around four or five projects uh, and I'm still paying zero to AWS because I'm under the free tier. Uh, on the other hand, at my startup, we have around uh, 15,000 uh, users. 
and I'm paying less than $70 per month. And uh, our application is heavily based on videos. So it's pretty affordable, I, I would say. So, um, yeah, then we will need to install globally uh, the Amplify CLI. There is a great video uh, that you can check um, if you want to visually to, to follow the tutorial, after which you need to uh, configure the Amplify uh, and it will walk you through some uh, creating some users, some policies, uh, which will give you a access key and a secret uh, access key. You add it uh, into your yeah, system and then you are done setting up Amplify. So I expect you to follow this uh, yourself. It shouldn't be um, uh, with any errors. It's pretty easy. And then we can uh, follow together the next step. So let's set up our full stack project. Uh, we already initialized the, the project. Now let's run Amplify init. Let's go to our project Amplify in it to initialize the project and what's cool about amplify that uh, you don't have to supply uh, any uh, arguments uh, but but instead it asks you everything uh, with questions and you just type like all the options so first of all enter a name i will leave it uh, as it was like tiktok uh, environment development here, uh, if you're using Visual Studio Code, choose uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I don't have my WebStorm there. Our application, our application is a JavaScript application and React Native from here. Uh, then, yeah, source path um, is the root folder, build command. Yeah, everything we leave as default. And now it will take a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, we just need to say yes. Do you want to use AWS profile? And here, uh, if you left your profile during uh, setting up Amplify as default, you will select default. However, I created it with a different name. So yeah, right now we will probably wait a couple of minutes until it sets up. So I have my coffee here. Oh, I already talked for 20 minutes. My, my voice is cracking. Recently, um, yeah, let's see what people are saying. What is the difference between GraphQL and REST API? Yeah, I think I, uh, I introduced that in the slides and hopefully it answered your question. Hello from Bra Brazil. Hello. Can GraphQL handle the relation? Um, what do you mean relation? If you are speaking about the relationships between uh, models and types, for example, a relationship between a user and a post, yeah, GraphQL is very good at that. And uh, yeah, once you set up this, like it works like, like a charm and everywhere where you have a post, for example, you will be able to access a user and while you have a user, you'll be able to access all its posts. So with just a little setup, it works very nicely. Um, hello from Lithuania. Thanks for uh, videos and your best, uh, Vadim. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have, uh, I have a very close friend in Lithuania. Um, yeah, so uh, as we see, uh, Amplify have uh, set up. Uh, it created for us a couple of files, for example, Amplify JSON, uh, the Amplify folder, like we'll not get into a lot of details right now. However, uh, what we need to do is to run Amplify push and Amplify push will take this, um, not push, but yeah, push, right? Or should we, first of all, uh, add something? Yeah, for, before pushing, because we didn't add any services, 
uh, we will first add some services and then push. Uh, yeah, the next step would be to install all the libraries that we need. And we can copy them from here. Um, and yeah, if you're using NPM, stick with NPM and use NPM. I'm using yarn. That's just my personal preference. It's not, nothing like nothing is better or worse. Yeah. Yeah, amplify in it. Then we add all the we install all, all the dependencies like AWS Amplify, Amplify React Native, and so on. And then we with three lines of code, like we configure the, um, the Amplify in our application. So the dependencies have been installed, the NPM packages. And uh, the next step is only if you're working on macOS and you have set up the project to work with for iOS. Uh, and after installing the dependencies, we need to install the pods. And yeah, if you are running on macOS, run npx pod install iOS. This will make sure to install all the native pods of all the libraries that we currently added. Yeah, it installed. And the last step uh, is to add the three lines of code, like importing Amplify, importing the config, and setting up the configuration for Amplify in our app.js. So let's go here. Uh, I think app.js was for Expo and index.js is for React Native. So here in index. We can import Amplify, set it up, add some semicolons, uh, save. And then let's try to do yarn iOS to run the application on iOS and to see if everything is still working and running. Yeah, it will take a little bit of time. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's compiling all the new libraries that we added and it usually it's only the first time that it takes up takes so much time and after that it runs much faster. So guys, um are you follow uh, did you follow the first episode of um of TikTok and also I'm interested if you're doing it yourself or you're just watching and what what is your experience like if you can tell in a couple of words Hello, uh, Anurag. Yeah, uh, meanwhile, our application installed and yeah, it looks like it's running the same way as we uh, left it previous time. And yeah, probably I should have uh, do a quick walkthrough for people that didn't watch the first uh, episode. So um, yeah, we what we developed in the previous week, um, we set up uh, the TikTok like post page uh, displaying the video. We can press to pause the video and we can press to play again the video. It displays uh, uh, all the information about the creator, uh, the song, the caption uh, and all the icons. 
and also uh, like button is working we can press to like we can press to uh, unlike and then we have the cool feed that TikTok implemented uh, that is when you scroll it's snapping to the view here we just display the same video but they are different and we can see that we just drag a bit leave and it snaps to to the center it works really smoothly i checked it on the device it's like very 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 smooth so also we set up all the navigation pages like for example the search uh yeah other pages that is the same one but because we didn't create uh we focused only on the main part of tiktok like videos and uh, feed and so on so guys um yeah hey priyank uh priyank uh thank you very much for the donation uh i love your hard work thank you very much thanks that means a lot to me i actually uh and i don't know if i told but um yeah i set up a goal for myself um Recently, I rejected an offer from uh, a job offer from Amazon uh, that was intended to start in uh, in summer of 2021, and uh, I set a goal for myself to yeah to start earning from from all the projects that that I'm doing, including YouTube and uh, stuff like that, to start earning the same like amount that Amazon would have paid in order not to get discouraged and yeah have a mental breakdown then so thank you very much you are um supporting the, the, that cause and thanks thanks a lot so let's get back where is the yeah okay so we talked about the graphql api um Okay, guys, the next step is to add a separate service because what is Amplify? Amplify is a set of multiple services. It's nothing new. It just uh, combines a lot of services that AWS already has and makes it very easy to integrate with, uh, with front-end application like React Native, React, and uh, other, yeah, other frameworks. And whenever we need something separate, uh, we, we have to add each service individually uh, and that w is also helping us maintain the application uh, clean and small because it doesn't come with everything installed. We will need to add, for example, if we need the API, we just call Amplify Add API and it will make sure to set up locally and in the cloud all the services that we need uh, for the API. So Amplify add api it will again ask us a couple of uh, questions so here we can create a graphql or a rest api we are gonna go with a graphql because we are cool <laughs> just joking so uh choose the default authorization type for the api so here we have a couple of options uh, for development builds. Uh, it is, re uh, it is, um, yeah, we can set up the API key. Uh, however, this API key will expire after uh, seven days or we can set up to, to, to expire like after 30 days or so on. Or you can use uh, Amazon Cognito user pool. However, with for that, we first need to, to to add authentication. So yeah, probably I will go with the API key. Uh, description, no, we don't need the description. How many days from now the API key should expire? So I would set a maximum value like 365 days. Um, yeah, and let's go forward. Uh, yeah, no, I am done. Uh, nothing advanced do you have an annotated graphql schema we don't have now but we're gonna create pretty soon so we select no so choose a schema template here we are suggesting two templates to to start from one is a single object 
for example, a to-do, and one is a one-to-many relationship for blogs, posts, and comments. So we're gonna select this one because we have like posts, we have users, we have one-to-many relationships, and um, yeah, we it's it will be easier for us just to change some some things in this schema to for our use case. Do you want to edit the schema now? Yes, I want, but I will select no because it cannot open for, in my case, it cannot automatically open. And I have to go manually to amplify folder. Um, here we go to backend API and we see schema.graphql. And this is the file that we're gonna work uh, with to set up our GraphQL API. Um, so here the initial uh, schema that they gave us as a template has a blog. Uh, each blog has multiple posts uh, and the post has comments. So in our case, a blog probably we can rename it to a user and the user will be a model. Uh, it will have an ID, it will have a name, uh, a name. It will have a, or should we go with a username, username. Let's go with a username because that's what we are gonna use for the handle here. So yeah, let's go with, the, with this username. It will also have an email. Uh, the email will be a string. Um, and it will have a list of posts. Uh, we just have to rename it not by, by blog, but by user fields ID. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing, we have a post and this is a model that will define the data that we need for one TikTok post. So what do we need for one TikTok post? We can have a look uh, in our hard-coded data here. So we will need an ID. Uh, we will need a video URI. Um, let's add some spaces here. So we will need video URI. The video URI will be a string and it will be required. So the exclamation mark means required, uh, cannot be null. Uh, so um, the next one. Uh, it will have a user, but we're gonna get to that a little bit later. Uh, description. Mm, yeah, it will be string. We don't, sorry, we don't need title, song name, song image. So for the song, I think it will be better not to save the song name and song image uh, inside the, the post, but to create a separate, um, a separate type, basically a se separate table in the database for the songs, because I expect that a song can be used multiple times by different users and by different posts. So we're gonna get to the song uh, a bit later, comments, shares, and so on. Mm comments, shares. No, we will uh, create them a bit differently. So I think that's it from the main data that we need for a post. Then here uh, we renamed, if you remember, blog to user. So let's rename it to a user ID. Basically a post will need to have a user ID in order to know like which user posted that uh, post, yeah. And yeah, that it will also have a user relationship. 
and this is how we uh, let me just rename everything not to to miss anything by user uh, and which field will define this key it will be user ID this one so uh, and here as well user ID and comments at the moment we will not need or should we leave them because we will need them later comment ID post ID post um, no we will not implement comments right now so we will add them later if we will need them so basically um, to connect a post with a user we define we define a user ID on the post uh, in order to define like the, the, the actual ID, like the string specification of ID uh, of a user who is publishing this post. And then based on this ID, we can create a user relationship. So basically from a post, we can connect this post with a specific user. And here it's not gonna be a blog, but a user. And how we are gonna do that? We're gonna do it based on the user ID field here. So it know that it will uh, find a user which has an ID that is equal to this user ID. So that's how it creates a connection from post to user. And using uh, this key that we are defining on a post, we are creating an inverse relationship from user to posts. So it has a list of posts and the key name is by user that we define here and the fields is ID saying that uh, we, we do that based on this ID. So yeah, that's, um, that's how we do it. Mm, yeah, let's also define a type song and this is gonna be a model. And a model is something that when we define a model, Amplify knows that this is a top level uh, type. And for this type, we uh, it needs to create uh, AWS DynamoDB table, like a database table. So each one should have an ID. Uh, name, it's string and artist right or how did we say no song name and image right or mm, yeah let's leave it let's leave it simple name and we will just provide one name for it uh, but in future if we want to separate like here like the the artist and the song name like we, we we can also do that but we'll keep it simple now uh, and also image URI the image URI will be also a string right yeah and we can save it image is not quite required it can be without the image as well I guess um, yeah, that's mostly it. So, song. Now, the same way as we uh, make a relationship from a post to a user, we need to make a relationship from a post to a song to know like which song uh, it uses there. So we'll have like song ID, it's gonna be an ID and the relationship to a song song connection fields and which fields it will use it will use the song id that we uh, defined here song id yeah i think that i didn't do any typos so uh yeah for our initial purposes this schema uh, should be done so come on and after creating and writing the schema, basically how our data will look, then we can run amplify, amplify, uh, push.
Amplify push. Amplify push will make sure to create all the services in the cloud. Um, because, yeah, right now it, we set up everything here. But Amplify needs to know like what to do with, uh, with them and what to create. So... So do you want to generate code? Yes. Uh, the code will be JavaScript. Um, file name. Yeah, the same. Yes. Uh, maximum statement depth. We will leave it to two and I'll explain it a bit later what that means. Yeah, we'll wait a couple of minutes until it uh, creates. I just, I should just check something. Um, um, yeah, here someone is calling. Just one second. Yeah, I'm back. So, uh, yeah, it will take a couple of minutes until it creates all the resources in uh, in the cloud. And until then, let's uh, let's see what people are saying. Um, cool, cool. Next build. Uh, could you do one time a uh, full tutorial with Node.js, even paid course like this? I'm glad to buy it. Um, yeah, maybe in future I will do, yeah, I saw a lot of people are asking for Mern stack, um, which is Mongo Express, React and Node. Um, yeah, I'm interested to do that as well because that's what I am using at my startup. Um, the thing is that it takes a little bit more time uh, and probably it will, yeah, it will need to do like a longer live stream or a different format like in multiple videos and yeah even maybe i i will do um a tutorial on that as well borja hello borja how are you doing i i am better i am better um yeah i, I healed from covid i had it the uh, previous week so <clears throat> i am better now Thank you very much. Greetings from Spain. Hello from Spain. I hope to be in Spain soon as well. Probably after New Year's, we'll see each other, Borja. Hello from Algeria. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? So, 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 what's going on? So guys, are you still here? Are you following? Is it interesting? Is it uh, too fast, too slow? How do you feel? Borges saying we are waiting for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Hope, hopefully everything will go as planned. So, um, yeah, everything ran successfully, which means that our, um, let me, which means all of our resources has been, have been created in, uh, in the cloud. And to check them, we're going to write amplify, uh, console API. And this will open AWS console where we can check uh, the generated API and everything that it created. So it open up this window and here, here we can see all our queries and all our yeah queries for mutations and um, yeah, and stuff like that. First of all, I would like to go to the schema and if you remember, we defined this schema here. And in our case, it was like 24 lines of code. And we defined 
uh, in 24 lines of code the, the schema, like how our data will look. However, Amplify automatically for us wrote, uh, completed our schema and wrote 288 lines of code. And it will spe it specified like all the queries, all the mutations, everything that we will need automatically. For example, it specified like uh, how will a input for creating a post will look like, how will a input for creating a song will look like, uh, and much more information here. It defined all the mutations for creating a user, for create updating a user, deleting, and you can see all the mutations here. Same way as for the queries, get user, list user, get post, list posts, get song, list songs, and so on. So for you to understand, like at my startup, uh, all this I wrote myself. So 288 lines I would have r written myself because I'm not using Amplify there. However, here, like it's much easier. Like we just define how it will look and Amplify handles uh, it itself. So if we go to queries, here is where we can run um, interactive queries. For example, we can run um, list posts to get a list of all the posts in our application. And right now, of course, we will have zero posts. Uh, but if we, yeah, in the items, uh, here we select only the fields that we need. For example, we need only ID. We need, for example, description and that's it. And we run. Yeah, of course, at the moment we don't have any items. We don't have any posts, but uh, soon we'll add, uh, we'll add the post in our database and it will return all the data here. So that's how we can easily test the API with the queries in the AWS console. So what's the plan? Uh, let's check. So we created the user model, we created the posts model, the songs model. Um, now let's manually from AWS console, create one user and a couple of posts and also implement these queries in our, um, in our application uh, to display, to connect and to fetch all the posts from our API that we just created. So um, I'm going to select here a mutation and I'm going to press on a plus sign. So the mutation will be uh, add user and we're going to select here create user. And for create user, we see that we need to provide an email and we need to provide a username, which is required. The ID we can provide if we want to, but it's not required. And if we don't provide any ID when we create a model, it will auto-generate one for us. So we will leave it empty. So for email, let's say, yeah, test email and username test user. Yeah, and here we need just to select things that we need to query back. Like we create it and then it returns us uh, the data um, back. So let's run this uh, mutation, add user. And we see that it created a user with ID auto-generated. Let's copy it because we will need it pretty soon. Uh, with the email that we provided and it says like it was created at this um, at this time. So uh, you can follow uh, doing that we, uh, from the left panel by providing all the value here, but I would rather uh, type the query and mutation myself because I think it will be a, a bit faster for me. So for example, let's run a query get user and the user we need to get by ID and let's provide the ID that we just selected. And here we, we can specify 
only the fields that we need to receive back. So if we specify only the ID, we get only the ID. If we specify also like created that and username, that's what we get back. Yeah, ID created that and username. Okay, so now uh, let's create a new mutation. Uh, mutation add post to create a new post. The mutation is create post. It has an input and the input will see what it has. Uh, so for the post, let's see here what it has. So we need to provide a description, a song ID that we didn't create yet. So we will have to go and create a song ID. We need also to provide a user ID and the video URI. Okay, but before that, but before that, I will add another mutation, add song to create a new song, which we don't have yet into the database. So it has an input. Uh, and what parameters a song has? I think name, yeah, name. So I'm gonna provide the name here and the image URI, right? Image URI. I'm gonna ID name. So for the image URI, I'm gonna take it from our dummy data that we have here. I hope it's still, it, it still works. Or you can just uh, copy a URL from any images from Google and paste it in your application. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it. So let's run the add song first query, mutation I mean. And it created the song with name NF search. We will need this ID. And this ID we need for add post mutation. Can I do them in different lines? So for the uh, song ID, we provide the idea of the song that we created. Uh, description, uh, test post from AWS, uh, user ID. Yeah, user ID. I will run the first query to get the ID and to copy the user ID that we created, provide it here and video URI. I will take it again from, from our dummy data or you can provide any video URI that is publicly available. Uh, copy, video URI, paste. Let's run add post. And uh, it, it created the post and it gave us back the ID because that's what we request back. Um, let's create a couple of more posts, for example, test two, uh, add post and test three, add post. Now, um, yeah, here on the top, let's create a query to get a list of posts to see if we uh, added all the posts to um, our database. So get list posts, list not users, but posts. And here we need to receive uh, the items and items is uh, an array of posts. And for each item we need uh, the ID of a post, we need the um, uh, description, for example, and yeah, let's let's run this query right now. Uh, yeah, we don't need this at the moment. So our list post return us, as you see, three, three posts. First one, test post from AWS, test two and test three. 
and they all have uh, uh, um, unique IDs generated automatically. So that's how we uh, add data and create data uh, in our um, database using our API that we created uh, from the AWS cons console. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you a little bit later how you can create this data automatically, not automatically, like from the application itself. But yeah, for testing purposes and at the beginning, um, yeah, this is a way to add it just by going to the app sync queries and running the mutation directly in uh, AWS cloud. Okay, so the next step would be to actually integrate our um, our application and to fetch the posts from uh, our API because currently we are getting the posts from this dummy data. But yeah, that's not gonna be the case anymore. Our data will be dynamic. We're gonna upload it to, to API, to our database, and then we're gonna fetch it and display it uh, dynamically. So, uh yeah let's get to it um before that i think i can and i should add everything to git uh set up set up amplify and uh api Yeah, so yeah, right now uh, let's have a look where are we uh, uh, fetching this data and uh, displaying it. And that is gonna be in the source screens and our home screen. If we open index, we see that we get posts from uh, our data folder that is our uh, dummy data posts. So now we need to display the posts uh, dynamically and to fetch them from our API. To do so, we need to import a couple of uh, yeah, libraries. So I'm gonna import, um, if I remember, yeah, let's do from uh, AWS Amplify. Um, and we're going to import the API and also a GraphQL operation. Then we need um, we need to define a um, yeah like um, we need to define a schema and to define all the fields that we need for this query that we're going to run. The same way as here we define like ID, created that, and username. The same way we need to define here like what data and what query you want to run. So one way is just to define this as a, as a GraphQL code here, uh, yeah, inside your file or in a different file. However, uh, Amplify is so nice that it takes care of this automatically and it generates all this code for us. So in our source folder, if we go to GraphQL, here we see a couple of files, mutations, queries, and subscriptions. We open the queries, and here we see that uh, Amplify already defined all the queries that we will need. These are very general, and they are querying all the data uh, that it has. Um, if you need something more specific, you can just copy this, uh, copy this query and add it to a separate file. Uh, outside the GraphQL folder because uh, the GraphQL folder is automatically written to when you do amplify push. So uh, if you change something here, uh, it will be overwritten in future. So we need this list post uh, query from here and it will do a query to the list posts. It will return the items with ID, video URI, description, user, uh, everything about the user, everything about the song and so on. Cool. So let's import it here. Um, so import 
something from uh, what we have here, GraphQL, then queries. And what query? List posts. Yep, yep. Okay, so, um, so we, uh, when we open the home page at that point in time, like when we first open the home page, we need to uh, fetch all the posts from the uh, API. So to do an action the first time that the component mounts, we we ca we define the use effect um, like like so use effect. We give here a function, and this function will be called uh, the first time that the component mounts, and we give an empty array as the second uh, argument to the use effect. If we don't give anything, this function will be called on every update. So make sure to write the empty array there. Uh, yeah, I imported the use effect from React. And here, uh, and here, um, and here we need to do the query to the API. However, the query to an API uh, is asynchronous. What means what what that means is like uh, we need to wait some time until the data comes through the internet uh, and uh, is available. So it's not something instant. Uh, it's something that happens behind the scenes, and we need to wait. So to do that in a use effect, we cannot have asynchronous. Uh, calls directly we need to um, put them in uh, put them in functions like like following like we declare we declare a function fetch post which will be a sync and here fetch all the posts and after that after declaring it we just call the fetch posts like this Come on, why it's prettier? Come on. Uh, so here we need to fetch all the posts. I will put them into a try catch because some errors might might uh, appear or some yeah uh, during the call. So we we need to make sure that we are catching all of those errors. So let's say const response is equal to a wait. API uh, GraphQL and uh, we need to give a GraphQL operation here and which operation? The operation that we imported from our queries list posts first one, come on Yeah, uh, I think that's uh, that's it. So let's just console log the response and see what we receive back from the server. Response, and here let's console error uh, the error. Uh, let's save. Let's check our emulator. Let's turn on the debug. Uh, and let's open the inspector console here so we see a couple of warnings uh, nothing very uh, uh, crucial there uh, however we see our data that we console log and let's open our data. Data. It has a list posts. List post has items, and these items are all the data about our posts that is coming from from the API. 
So we see three posts, test three, test two, and test post from AWS. The same post that we created manually in AWS. So we have them, but we need somehow to display these posts. So how to do that? Uh, we will need to store somewhere this post in our component in order to display them. And uh, we store them in a state variable. So let's define our state variable for the posts. Posts, set posts. And this is uh, use state hook. And initially it will be an empty array. Let's import the use state from React. And here where we receive a post, um, instead of console logging, we're gonna call the set posts setter for our state uh, and set the post from the response dot, I think is data dot list posts dot items. Is that correct? Like, let's check here. Uh, data dot list posts dot items. Yeah, that's the array. Set posts like this. All right, so here we are rendering the posts. Now we can delete the, uh, the dummy data that we had here. So let's save and here we see test post from AWS from coming from test user, then uh, test user two, test two, uh, and test three. That's great. The video is displayed, uh, the description, the user, the username is displayed. The only thing that is not displayed is the, uh, the date about the song. Because if we remember in our dummy data, we had the data about the song directly um, in our post model, but now we have like, uh, we have them in a song object like separately. So let's go to uh, components index and where do we have song name? So here we need probably post.song.name, save. And I've search. All right, that's good. And song image. No, no, no. Here, song.image.uri. Is it like that? Yep, we see the image URI. Uh, and the next thing is. I forgot to add image URI to the user. Hmm. That's a bummer. So I will I will have to wait like around five to ten minutes until it adds a image URI there. Or are we just ignoring it? And all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's Let's yeah, let's go to our Amplify backend uh, API schema, and in our user model we need the image URI URI, which will be a string. Mm, all right, so let's just run Amplify push to do the changes for the user model because we forgot to add the image. So guys, yeah, um, as you see, it's pretty easy to connect a database. And right now our application is displaying the, the data that is coming from our GraphQL API. Uh, and if we add more data in our console, it will automatically display it here. Yes and yes. I 
Hello, hi. So somebody Yeah, right now we'll have to wait a couple of minutes until the our scheme updates. So guys, are you still here? How are you doing? Are you enjoying this? All right. All right. What about resource? Use it for flat list. Uh, what do you mean the resource used for flat list? We are using the data that is coming from the backend right now, and we are displaying the data in the flat list. Not sure if that's what you meant. Alexandra, ever much. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, um, Checking something from the previous uh, builds. So where was that? Yeah, it created, uh, I mean, it updated our API. So let's go to AWS and we will run a update mutation. So you'll, ha you'll see how we can update um, a user. So right now, image URI, if we run the first query, let's get user we see that the image is null because we didn't specify any images yet. So now let's run a mutation, uh, update user, update user, and it needs an input. And for the input, we need to save an ID to specify like which user we want to update. Come on, why? I miss so much my um, <laughs> my ultra wide screen during the live streams. So where I am right now? What happened there? I don't understand. My query. Where is the queries? Okay, let's run, try again. So, uh, 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 mutation, update user, update user, input ID is this one. And what we want to update, we want to update the image URI. So for the image URI, we're gonna provide the image that we already have somewhere, right? User image, let's go. Image, so back we want to get the ID and image URI. Let's try to, has invalid an image URI is invalid, why? I think I just need to uh, refresh the page because it didn't update with a new 
And right now, if I paste the same code, Right now, yeah, right now it sees that it has an image URI. So yeah, right now our user has an image URI and that's how we run an update. And the things that we uh, put in the input, those things uh, are gonna uh, be updated. So for example, currently uh, the username of our user is test user. If we want to update that, we can run an update mutation uh, test two. We can run it um, and if we run the TikTok again, we see that the username updated to test two and the username has an avatar right now. So yeah, that's, That's uh, that's everything that I wanted to show you with the API. We're probably gonna get back to it uh, a little bit uh, later when we implement like op 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 uploading, um, creating a post by uploading a video and creating automatically users when you sign up uh, with a new account and so on. But for displaying, uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, let's check some comments. Data use it. Uh, are using pagination for load more. Yeah, uh, right now I didn't implement pagination. Mm, however, mm, you can implement pagination and I explained it uh, in previous video. Um, it's pretty simple and everything is ca uh, taken care by Amplify. Uh, because, for example, let me write a query here and I'll show you what I mean, how you can handle the pagination with the API. So let's write a query, query a list, all the list, uh, all the queries that start with list, for example, list posts, uh, it has a limit and this is uh, how many posts you want to get. So if you remember, we have three posts, but we're gonna say like we want just one post. And here we defined for the items what we want to, to receive. And besides items, and let's say uh, description. And besides items, we will also query the next token. And the next token is a, um, is a token for the next page. So let's run this query. And we see that in the items array, we see only one uh, post. And the post has a description test post from AWS. Now, if we take the next token, if we copy it like that, and provide it as a variable to the list post, next token, if we run it right now, we again see only one. However, it's a different one. It's a different description. And that's again how you go to the next page. So let's put the second page. We see test three. And again, it has a next post. However, if we put the next page here, we see no items and no next token, meaning that this is the last page. So that's basically how you do pagination. I'm gonna, not gonna implement that in the project because it will take uh, it will take some time. Uh, Vadim, where are you from? Uh, so I'm originally from Moldova, a very small country besides uh, Romania and Ukraine. Uh, are you using Expo for this project? Uh, no, I'm not using Expo, it's React Native CLI because a lot of people asked me to use React Native CLI. Previous projects that we built were uh, using Expo, so if you're interested in Expo, check them out. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> yeah, my voice is cracking. Let's drink some water. Let's stay hydrated.
I drank so much tea while uh, I had COVID, like, I can't handle more tea. All right. So that's it with fetching data from the API, pagination, and so on. All right. So what's next? The next is something uh, pretty interesting, authentication. So uh, um, most of application that we build nowadays need some kind of authentication to be able to protect your data, to be able to um, connect data with users and to use it on multiple devices in order not to lose data and so on. And especially when we are building some kind of a social network up, the uh, authentication is crucial. And usually authentication takes a lot of time to set it up correctly, to set up the, uh, for it to be secure. And also like to set up, uh, I don't know, like signing in with Apple, with uh, Google, with uh, Facebook and so on. However, uh, Amplify, gives us a lot of good stuff automatically from the box. So you're gonna see how easy it is to add authentication to our application. So as I said, each new service that we want to add uh, to our project, we uh, need to call Amplify uh, add and the service name. Before that, let me just commit everything, uh, API. Mm, I forgot to add git commit. So now let's run amplify add authentication of enter. And yeah, I'm going to close everything. So I will select default configuration. Uh, if you want to set up social providers, which means uh, signing up with Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon, and so on, then select uh, default configuration with social providers. However, you'll have to set up the projects in uh, Facebook and Google um, and get a token from there. So we're gonna go with a simple version of default configuration. Uh, I'm going to select username uh, because that's how we will log in mm, and that's it. That's everything that we need to, um, that Amplify needs to know from us in order to set up the authentication flows. Uh, yeah, the next step is Amplify push. Uh, this will push all the changes to uh, Amplify Cloud, to AWS Cloud, and create all the resources that uh, are needed. So until it uh, creates, let's also check the, um, yeah, Amplify add, what else? No. Let's also check the tutorial to make sure that we did everything. So also on the docs.amplify.aws, uh, here we can see how to add authentication. Amplify add off, that's what we did. Amplify push, awesome. The next step is to install the libraries. Not sure if we installed mostly, mostly all of these libraries. Yeah, I think we installed them. Amplify, Amplify React Native, Cognito, and NetInfo. Let's just have a look. Here we need to say yes. Uh, in the package.json, let's have a look if we have... Um, amplify. Amplify, Amplify React Native, uh, Cognito and net info yeah we have all of them 
So we can skip that, this, uh, and yep, next, I'm gonna show you how to implement the, um, the authentication itself. Now we just have to wait until Amplify sets up everything in the cloud. Alex is saying, love is hard work. Thank you very much. I I missed so much um, like working and doing this live stream because previous week I didn't do. I wanted so much to do it, but then I decided like I should rest and uh, get better from COVID. And I couldn't wait till this week to to, to go live. This was probably the first time in like the last three or four years when I spent like, I don't know, like three days without working, staying like mostly in bed and watching movies. Like Alex, my girlfriend, couldn't believe that, that I'm staying in bed and watching movies. Like that's so rare for me. <laughs> we started watching the um, uh, Casa de Papel. It was so nice, like I couldn't stop watching it. And that's the first movie that I could watch uh, like more episodes in one day. Usually more than two, like I cannot handle. I cannot stay in the same place and watch a movie. But this one, I think in two days, we watched <clears throat> one uh, season. So yeah, it was really interesting. So come on, come on, come on. Come on. So guys, how are you doing? How are you feeling? <clears throat> all right, so all the resources have been created in the cloud. Um, and yeah, uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, you can also um, do Amplify console uh, authentication and it will open the authentication console, but there is nothing much to see there or do there. So the next step that I'm gonna do is uh, in our app.js, I'm gonna import a lot, um, from React uh, Native Amplify or no, Amplify React Native. Um, AWS Amplify React Native. I'm gonna go and import the with authenticator. And I'm gonna wrap the uh, export default application. I'm gonna wrap the application in the with authenticator function. So I'm gonna say with authenticator and pass the application down there. I'm gonna save it. And uh, wait until it refreshes. Ta da! We have authentication uh, flow set up. So, two lines of code like importing authenticator, then wrapping that with authenticator and application. And we have all the screens ready uh, for everything that we need for the authentication, which includes signing in, but we don't have an account right now. So let's go to sign up page. Uh, for the username, uh, I'm gonna go and write my username here. Uh, I'm gonna create a simple password. And I'm gonna write my email.
and even a phone number. I'm gonna um, put a random phone number here. I'm gonna sign up. And uh, Amazon, uh, AWS should send me a confirmation code. So this is everything set up by default from them. So this is in order to confirm the, um, yeah, to confirm the email address. So the confirmation code is this one. You should receive it on your email. I received it right away. So confirm. And yeah, that's it. Right now we can sign in to our account. So I'm gonna write again my username. Uh, yep, like this. And the very secure password. Ta-da, I'm in the application. So in a couple of seconds, you saw that I created an, uh, a new account into the application. I received an email on my email with a confirmation code. I confirmed in application uh, my email just by inserting the confirmation code that I received. And then I signed up into the application. Uh, and right now, yeah, uh, if we open again the application, it's gonna remember that we already signed up and it's gonna open uh, our application right away without going through the sign-in process. How cool is that, guys? Like, like, in a couple of minutes, like how much, like five minutes probably, we set up an authentication flow, which is secure, which is scalable and pretty easy to install. And also it is very flexible because you might ask like, um, how can you adjust the design and styling on your own needs? Uh, you can do that as well. And you would have to create the screens yourself and just call some functions that you will import from uh, Ampli AWS Amplify. So you can get more information about that on their website. It's uh, pretty simple as well. You will, for example, import a function like sign in and you'll call that function with a username and password that you, you receive and so on. However, you'll have to implement all the designs to handle all the displaying the errors. Uh, and so on yourself. So if you want the flexibility and if you want to um, uh, a custom authentication uh, screens, like you can easily do that. However, we'll stick with this default because it's pretty simple and it does the job. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it with, that's mostly it with authentication. We're gonna get into some details uh, soon. So, uh, Alexandra is asking, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm just, um, yeah, my, my voice is cracking, but I, I am good, I'm good. I'm drinking water. Amir, hello, hello. Excellent, fast and simply. Yeah, that's what I love. Um, for, and we, we, for a lot of purposes, like this is more than enough when you want to build like, I don't know, a prototype, a testing application, a project for your portfolio, like this is more than enough to, to set up and you have everything. You even have like the forget password uh, screens, which will receive a code on the uh, email and so on. So it gets your, it gets the job done. And I really wish that I used Amplify for my startup project because I would have saved so much time. For example, I spent <clears throat> around uh, one or two weeks setting up, uh, just uh, signing up with Apple because yeah, it was pretty tough. <laughs> but with uh, Amplify, it would take me like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> um, a bit of technical details. So um, for the authentication flows, Amplify is using a service called Cognito, or hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, maybe it's, no, but I think it's Cognito. So yeah. Um, and it man manages all the users in uh, in this cognito. 
the, the thing is that uh, there is no uh, out of the box relationship and connection between a Cognito user that we uh, that is created when we sign up and a user in our database. And that's uh, basically uh, as far as I researched. I didn't see any out-of-the-box uh, connection and relationship. Basically, what that means, when we sign up, it creates a user incognito. You can sign up uh, later. It remembers like your password. However, uh, it doesn't create, for example, a user in, uh, in our GraphQL, in our database. So if we do list users, uh, we will not see get user get user what's happening no 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 list list users i meant uh we will not see uh, a new user created for example we're gonna see only the one that we created manually so to do that we're gonna do some hacks in our application when we open the application and yeah in our application that means that uh, the user will be already signed uh, signed in. We will uh, do a query to our database and check if there is a user already registered for this uh, Cognito user, for this authenticated user. And if there is no uh, user registered in our database for this use, uh, Cognito user, we're going to do so. We're going to create a new user, save its email and stuff like that. And later on, um, we will be able to attach like a post to a user because we need, um, we need a database user to be able to attach a post to a user. Hopefully that's clear. Mm, probably this is the most like tricky part that uh, might, be more, might be more difficult. Uh, other than that, everything like is simple magic, like uh, some some commands and stuff like that. So before starting that, let's um, do a git add, git commit uh, authentication, and yeah, let's start. Okay, okay, okay. So in our application, when our application loads, uh, we need to do all our stuff that I just explained. So to do that, we will just need a use effect. Uh, a use effect. Yeah, I think you already uh, are familiar with the syntax of a use effect. And here in the use effect, we're going to define a, a async function because we're going to need some asynchronous calls. So I don't know, fetch user async like this, and we'll call it right away, fetch user. So um, get uh currently authenticated user um, check if uh the user exists in database if it doesn't meaning that it's a new user it's a newly registered user then um, create a new user in database so this is going to be the flow that we're going to try to implement right now so first of all get current authenticated user uh, we're going to do uh, by calling um, authentication service uh, and the function is current authenticated user and we're gonna also say that it should bypass cache to be uh, to be sure that it actually does a request to the service server and it doesn't take it just from cache 
uh, as you see, we didn't import of authentication. So let's do that here, import authentication, also API we will need and also a GraphQL operation from um, AWS Amplify. All right. Uh, what else we will need? We will need um, we'll need to import a mutation uh, that will help us create a user in the database. Uh, so from um, from our GraphQL folder, GraphQL, mm, GraphQL, no, where is it? Oh, it's from source. GraphQL mutations, not queries. We need to import the uh, create user mutation because we're gonna create users now. All right. This prettier is set not to have um, spaces uh yeah after the curly braces but i'm used to have them so they it looks so ugly without them <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like look how how beautiful it looks like this but no it wants and i didn't set them up with my preferences so we imported off uh, the auth package and we uh, call the current authenticated user so let's go ahead and of course console log because console log is the power of debugging tool user info save uh, open our debugger and here we see cognito user uh, the one that I was talking about and if we uh, open the cognito user uh, it has more attributes, uh, the key, the pool, um, all the information that it needs. Uh, and But the things that we need is under attributes. And we see under attributes the email of the authenticated user. We see that the email is verified, the phone number. Uh, phone number if it's verified, and it's not yet verified. And we see um, SUB, uh, sub. Uh, I should read what it stands for because, um, yeah, I, um, I don't know what it stands for, but this uh, sub is like a uniquely identifier of a user in, a, in our Cognito pool. So this is like an ID of a user in our Cognito, Cognito user pool where all the users live. So that's very important because with this sub, with this unique ID, we're gonna connect uh, a Cognito user to a database user. So we're gonna have the same ID for uh, here as a sub, and we're gonna have the same ID for the ID of a user in the database, which, 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 pretty fast to show you what it's talking about. Yeah. This ID will be the same ID as the sub. And that's how we're gonna know like which user uh, is which, like which Cognito user is which database user. Yeah, that's how we're gonna make the relationship. Uh, and one more thing. And the thing is that username, as you see, is not under attributes, but is in the, in the da data itself. So here is the username. Okay, with all the information uh, known, let's check. Uh, so let's have a, just a quick uh, check. If there is no user info, that I don't think will ever happen, but let's be sure, let's just return. Basically, if there is no current authenticated user, but it shouldn't com uh, come here if there is no one, um uh, yeah however we are checking that and we are just returning to be sure defensing programming that's called <laughs> so um 
Now we should check if there is there is a user uh, with that with that ID that I was showing. So let's do mm, const um, get user await API GraphQL and here we'll give a GraphQL operation and what operation the the get user get user that we didn't import yet so the get user and the get user needs some variables it needs like to know the id of a user that we want to receive so the id will be user info dot attributes uh, dot not id but sub So we are trying to to fetch a user from our database with ID at, uh, similar to yeah with ID from the user info attribute sub the one from uh, the cognito user. So let's import this get user uh, query. I'm gonna duplicate this line because I'm lazy to write it. Rename it to queries and get user. Get user. Okay, uh, so if get user dot data uh, dot get user, if this data exists, that means that there is already a user in the database. We can write console uh, log user already uh, exists in database. So if it exists, we need again to return to stop the execution of this function. However, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, we need to create it. So let's define how our, our new user will look. So our new user, it will have an ID and the ID, as we said previously, will be the sub uh, field of uh, our cognito user uh, it will have a username uh, that we're gonna take from uh, not from attributes just from username as we saw that this is the only thing outside attributes uh, it will have email probably user info dot um, dot attributes dot email come on attributes dot email uh what else user id username email uh, and image uri so image uri uh at the moment we don't have any mechanism to upload the image when the user uh, logs in so we're gonna do some uh, some hacks and assign him like a, a, a random uh, image, like get random image, and we're gonna implement this function above to return a random URL for 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 the image. So uh, yeah, let's. I have here prepared a couple of uh, random images and let's implement the function uh, get random image uh, function. So let's return a random image at position at a random position. So let's do math floor. Yeah, something like this. Math floor, uh, a random number multiplied by the length of the images. So that's how we will get uh, a random uh, position. And this function will return us a random image URL. All right, yeah, get 
random image. Okay, so our new user, we can console log to see that all the data is correct before sending it to our database. So let's console log, it um, updates. Let's scroll a bit. Unhandled promise reject must provide source received undefined, received undefined. Looks like you're, no. Yeah, we have uh, unhandled pro promise rejection. No credential application ID or no, this is okay. This is uh, this uh, this error with uh, application ID from the pinpoint. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, just ignore this warning. It's coming from the. Um, from a service that we didn't set up it yet, but uh, it's it's not a problem. So I'm only wondering why it's not here yet. So console log user user info. So let's make sure that it cognito user. And it stops somewhere. Why? Where does it stop? And that must provide source. Uh, might be, might be this get user. GraphQL operation get user variables ID. Uh, API GraphQL. API GraphQL. Where is this error? It's fetch user. Do I have a typo somewhere? GraphQL operation. Get user. Let's just try to console log this one. Save. And see if we get the, yeah, the sub, we get it correctly. Must provide source. Received undefined. Must provide source. Who must provide source? Which source? Queries, we import it. Get user is defined. Oh, I know. We named our variable get user the same as uh, get user. Yeah, the same as the operation, the query. Get user response. Get user response, get user response. Save. And right now, uh, right now, yeah, right now we see that this is the object that we are gonna uh, save to the database. So we have an email, we have an ID, an image, which is randomly, and a username. That's nice. Now we need just to send this new user to uh to the API instead of console login here. So let's say await API dot GraphQL GraphQL operation and the operation will be create user. Create user and we need to provide the input not user but input uh, for the newly created user data. So like this. Why are we complaining again? Okay, you want it like this? All right. So let's save, uh, no, let's 
check right now in the okay it saved so let's run list users again however i see a unhandled promise no if we run the list users now we already see the test user that we created uh, manually and also the uh, vadim savin user that is linked that is linked to the cognito user basically this is this is me this is the user that signed up uh to to our application to the tiktok and if we run the application again uh, come on let's close it and let's run it again uh, yeah we're gonna see here user already exists into database because it's gonna do a query with this id it's gonna see that we already register that user in database and it's gonna stop the execution so if we do again this query we see still two users which is expected so yeah that's how we um that's how we connect a cognito user with a database user so i'm gonna go ahead and uh commit the changes uh connect cognito user with uh, database user all right so how did you find this out was this clear uh, Someone is writing, you are the best. Hello from Brazil. Hello. Hi. Uh, how are you, sir? Uh, hello, sir. I have made TikTok clone, but I couldn't host it with AWS. How to solve this? Please give me any solution. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, wh why couldn't you host it with and develop it with AWS? Do you have any like, um, yeah, limitations? okay so um yeah that's it with authentication we created the users and now let's check what are the next steps all right the next step is the interesting part to create a post to record the actual video and to upload it to to the cloud and after that also to create a post to display it in the feed and so on like that's the last step to connect all the dots in order to have a fully function functional app that is going to allow users to sign up sign in authenticate with their account then create a post uh their post will be displayed in the feed other people will be able to see it like it and so on so this is the last step to yeah to make it uh, to make it a workable app so i'm gonna use a uh, react native camera so we can open it up and it has a pretty good documentation on how you can install it uh, React Native Camera is going to be used for uh, for uploading videos, for recording videos. Uh, yeah, I'm using the same library uh, at my at my startup because, yeah, as I said, it's heavily based on video. So yeah, it's pretty stable. It it gets its job done. Uh, so the first thing is we're gonna we have to install the React Native library, and let's go ahead and do that. Uh, yarn add uh, React Native camera. Uh, Arif says make serial. What do you mean serial? Uh, 
So you have a dependency installed. And yeah, the next step is only if you are working on Mac OS, we're gonna install the pods, npx pod install. And yeah, this is mostly everything we need to do for installing the, the library because React Native does the auto link, uh, linking itself. Uh, so we're gonna skip the manual install and we're gonna go to the iOS other required steps. We need to add these permissions uh, in the info file. So let's copy these permissions from here. And let's open our iOS folder. Here we're gonna go to TikTok or the name of the project of your project. In the info, we're gonna scroll down till the end. And before closing the dictionary, uh, here we're gonna paste in the the code that we copied, the one for the uh, permissions for uh, using the camera, microphone, storage, and so on. Yeah, this is for uh, iOS and for Android. For Android, we need uh, to add to the Android manifest as well the permissions, required permissions. Uh, we're gonna copy these permissions here. We're gonna go to Android uh, application source main Android manifest. And here on the top where we see uh, the permission for the internet, we're gonna paste in the other permission for camera, for external storage, for recording audio and so on. Uh, and the last steps is to add these missing uh, dimension strategies in Android app builder build dot gradle and in the default config. Android app uh, build dot gradle uh, Android scroll down here you find here Android and you find default config. So in the default config we paste in the missing dimension strategy and yeah that's probably it so i'm gonna probably continue um, from here running on the android because uh, the camera uh, runs better on android and it has like a simulated camera so let's go ahead and run i'm gonna probably close ios to spare a bit my computer, let's hopefully you can see it good here. Well, let's close all the application that I have open there. And let's wait until uh, it builds. What do you have here? Nothing, okay. Stay hydrated guys, drink water. Okay, command failed, good. So let's have a look why it failed. Uh, error while merging DEX archive. The number of method reference DEX file cannot exceed 74K. So sometimes uh, we have this error. Uh, I'm not very technically um, informed about this error and why it happens because I'm not like Android developer. Uh, however, we need, I know that we need to, we need to set up uh, this DEX, multi-DEX multi uh, library. 
uh, in our project because uh, right now our file exceeds 70, 64 uh, kilobytes, some of the files. So yeah, I have it here. Uh, and to do that in our Gradle build file, we need to, uh, to add the implementation of the multi-dex and then we need to enable it in our default config. So let's go back to our build.gradle. Scroll down where we see implementation in the dependencies. And yeah, let's add it somewhere here. Uh, let's save. And back to our Android default config. Let's add a multi dex. Mm. In order not to do some typos, I'm gonna copy and paste it here. Save. And if I build again and run, hopefully now it will work. Come on. Let's go. Uh, all right, so attempt to invoke interface method uh, on a null reference. Uh, what's happening there? Yeah, right now it builds and um, let's wait a bit. Uh, Gabriel is saying, thank you very much Vadim for your stream. I'll see the repeat time to launch here. Thank you very much for watching. So yeah, join us uh, next week and yeah, make sure to, to continue it watching and do it yourself and publish the result in our Discord channel. Um, Serial is an exclusive social media app in India made for celebs. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, maybe I should check it out. <sighs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Why does it take so much? Okay, hopefully it worked. Um, yeah, right now it asks us to log in because we are on a different device. We are on Android and we're gonna uh, sign in with the same uh, username that we already registered. And my like this, sign in. save and yeah we see it working so we installed our camera now we need to use it somewhere so for that we need to create uh, a new screen we need to create a new screen uh, for recording a video for our camera so let's create a directory uh, camera camera and here let's create the index file index.js uh, let's also create the um, styles.js we will need it later and here let's start from the beginning import uh, react from react import probably will need the view 
let's say a text from react native uh we're gonna also need um react native camera that we just installed from react native camera mm, import styles from the our styles file and let's define our uh, uh compo component uh camera so here we're gonna return a view styles dot container uh, inside the view we will have um, what we'll have we'll have a react native camera or let's just display a text and make sure that we see it uh, hello there hello there export default camera and let's also define the um the styles style shit from react native and const styles equal to style shit create export default Old styles. All right. So uh, right now we need uh, we need to render this camera whenever we go to this page because right now on this page we display the same home uh, home screen. So let's go to our navigation home bottom tab navigator and where we import home. Let's duplicate this and import camera as well with a name camera let's scroll down and see the tab with a name upload and for the component instead of a home we will display the camera let's save refresh and go to this page and we see here hello there component so guys um, I need one minute I'm gonna come back pretty soon don't leave me please guys i'm back oh i feel much better now uh so okay we displayed hello there in uh, this component let's go to our component and instead of a text uh, render the actual react native camera and here we're gonna uh, send a couple of options so um, the first thing is let's define some styles here style 
else dot preview um, and for the beginning probably probably that's it mm. yeah let's also go ahead and define the styles the styles our container will have will be displayed as a flex one uh, the direction will be column and also let's say that the background color will be black our preview uh, component where we will see uh, the preview of a camera will also have a flex one uh, and justify content flex end and we're gonna align items in the center uh, yeah this is probably uh, it so let's save refreshing and right now we can see our preview of a camera so yeah i think that we can yeah this is the preview uh if you're gonna run the application on a real device you're gonna see like the actual preview like of your camera like whatever you see in the room uh, this is the simulated version of uh, of a camera on an android emulator so right now we need to define um to define to to create a button that will start and pause the recording so let's add that button underneath here view um and for the start or no let's we'll need to to register the touch the, um, the touch touches so let's define it as a touchable opacity <laughs> why i always struggle to write touchable opacity right that's how you write it please uh, we need to import it from here on press we're gonna call them on record this is gonna be a function that we're gonna implement uh, a bit later but let's just define it as an empty function this will start the recording the actual recording uh, on press can we uh, touch styles directly here styles um, styles button save I'm wondering so the height will be 50 pixels width will be 50 pixels uh background color let's say uh white where we will change it depending on uh if we are recording or not so let's save okay it's here uh our okay let's add a line item center for our container as well i uh, all right it works Mm, let's for the button uh, margin vertical on top and the bottom 10 will be enough uh, why does our preview disappeared I'm wondering why let's a lot 
Mm, no, 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 no. Align self center. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, let's make the, the button uh, round. So to do that, we're gonna set the border radius to half of the width and height, 25. Uh, like this. And yeah, I think that's, yeah, it's pretty simple, but it's um, it's quite close like to, to, what, what, to what we need. Yeah, like TikTok, I'm checking right now, uh, it has, also some uh, some animations, but I think it's pretty good. So let's uh, all right. Uh, background color not white, but let's give it a, a red color. That's how TikTok has it, something like that. Okay, that's that that's good enough. So also um uh, this button will have two states. Whenever we are not recording, it will have this uh shape. Uh however, when we start recording, it should make it should be like a square to indicate that uh, when you press, you stop the recording. So to do that, we're gonna we will need a state variable uh, to know if we are recording right now or not. So let's define a const uh, is recording set is recording default value use state. The default value will be false because it's not recording initially. And here for the styles, we need to adjust the shape of a button or we need to create two different styles. For example, uh, button record and button, I'm just gonna copy. and button stop. And our, and we'll, based on the is recording, we'll decide which styles we will assign. So if is recording, we're gonna assign button uh, stop. Otherwise, we're gonna assign Styles button start or record. Record uh, is recording. Use state. Let's import that. I forgot. Is recording. Why you don't like it? Mm, prettier. Mm. Okay. Let's. Uh, let's say here true and adjust the styles of this button. So uh, to make it square, we're gonna set like a, I don't know, a free border radius uh, like this and make it probably just a bit smaller. Mm-hmm, margin vertical. Um, let's make it 30, 30, and margin vertical 20, 20, 20, plus 20, I guess. So if I set it to false, save. Yeah, 
Yep, yep, yep. That's how I want it to be. So we style the button and right now, whenever we press record, we should tell the library that it should actually start, uh, it should actually start recording. Um, yeah, let's uh, go ahead. We need a reference to the React Native camera because in this function, we need to, to say that, hey camera, you need to start recording or hey, you need to stop. So to do that, we're gonna use a reference to the camera. So I'm gonna uh, declare it here, const camera use ref, um, that's it, let's import it. And in the React Native camera, we say reference is this, not ref, but camera. Camera. Save. So if if we are currently recording, we need to say, um, camera dot current for the reference, stop recording. Camera stop recording. Uh, otherwise, if we are not recording, uh, we should say camera start recording. Uh, await camera current uh, record a sync. Something like that, right? Uh, record a sync. And yeah, this will be a sync function. And the data will contain the URL of a file that has been recorded and it's gonna be fulfilled whenever we press stop recording. So uh, let's here just console log uh, data to see what we have. And we can say set is recording to uh, false. And here set is recording to true. Uh, all right, so let's press start recording. Hopefully it will work. It might lag a bit. Yeah, you see it lags and I will press stop recording. All right, I see a problem there. Stop it, stop it, please, 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 please until Stop, come on, come on, <laughs> please. So uh, the thing is that we are setting the uh, is recording uh, after, after this await, but as I said, like our function will, uh, will wait here until we stop the recording. So we need to put it just before this, this await, but better, but even better, we need to define uh, some listeners on the React Native camera to set this uh, recording status automatically from the camera without assuming that it will um, uh, it will start recording just when we say it to record because it might take some time. So uh, if we check the documentation, React Native camera. Mm. We should see here some uh, something with on, on camera ready, on status change. Function to be called when native code emits status change in relation to authorization change. Camera status. Uh, no. One recording start and one recording end. These are the two functions that uh, callback functions that the, the library will call whenever um, this event is fired. So React Native Camera uh, is equal to a function. Set, and whenever 
the recording is started, we need to set uh, is recording to true and one recording end. We need to set it to false. So we need to uh, also delete them from here because we we are doing them based on callback functions. This is much better and safer than uh, we were doing uh, above. So let's open our application again. So let's go here. I think that there might be even some problems with the um, permissions because they didn't see that I didn't give any permissions. So let's start recording. Yeah, the button changed. Let's stop the recording. It's very laggy. The camera is working like super laggy on, on a emulator. And let's see our here we see the data that we console logged. So we see that the device orientation was uh, one, which is vertical. Uh, is recording inter interrupted? No, because we manually stopped the recording. And the URI, URI is the is the URI of the file uh, which lives in uh, in the memory of the phone, in the cache of the phone. So yeah, that's uh, that's how we uh, record a video in Rack Native. If I'm not mistaken, let let me just have a look. I think we have everything. We have starting recording. We have stopping recording, and um, yeah, uh, there are more options that you can uh, set like the video quality if you want uh, lower video quality to record uh, the codec the, um, the format uh, if you want to to have like audio or not and so on like there are a lot of options so if you are interested check out the react native uh, camera documentation uh, but that's everything we need uh, as minimum as we need to set up the camera recording. Okay, the next step, the next step, we need to create a screen. After we record the video, uh, the user will be redirected to a screen where he will insert the, um, uh, the caption, the description of a video, and then he will upload it to, um, to the database. So let's create that screen here, directory. Uh, create post, create post. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste the styles uh, from there and index to save up some time. And I forgot to uh, do a commit. Git commit minus m uh, React Native Camera. Okay, let's continue. So create post. Let's close others. Uh, create post. I will delete most of the things from here. Uh, let's just text. Hello, uh, create post. And in the navigation, we need to create this, uh, to define this page in our index because it's not in our bottom tab navigator because we don't want to display it in the bottom tab navigator. Um, 
uh, as a separate page, but it's a page in our root. We can define it here. So uh, here besides home, we're gonna duplicate the home and we're gonna import our screen create post from screens create post. Um, let's name it create post component create post post stack screen yeah i think that's that's how we will do it maybe it will need uh, options to display the header there but i'm not sure so let's save um and let's implement the navigation the navigation we're gonna implement in our camera so whenever we finish recording whenever we have this data we need to redirect to the create post page so uh, for that we're gonna use uh, we're gonna need the navigation cause navigation equal to use navigation Core, not core, but native. Mm, and let's say navigation dot navigate create post, and we need to also send like the video uh, file URL to because later we'll need it there. So it's in our data dot URI. Da um, video URI data dot URI. All right. Uh, let's save. Let's start. Rec let's start recording. And whenever we stop recording, we should be redirected to that page. And uh, let's stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, don't be laggy. Don't crash right now, please. Yep, we are redirected. I don't know where yet. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Because we copy pasted the styles in the create post styles and our container has uh, a background color black. So if we save right now here, hello, yeah, it's good. So in the navigation, let me try to, to see if I can add uh, options, header shown, true, I want to show the header, save, yeah, it shows the header with create post and with the back button. Uh, let's define also title and I think TikTok has just the title post. Okay. For navigation is good. Um, our create post page, what will it have? It will have, um, it will have just a input for the description of a video and a button to post. Of course, TikTok has more information there, for example, to tag per people, to share it automatically on our social networks, but we're gonna keep it simple uh, in order to, to be able to finish it today. <laughs> so, um, Text input, how, how is it How is it called the, the, the input in React Native? Why my brain just froze? React Native text input. 
is it just yeah text input like that text input so let's define text input we need to set a value on text change uh, and probably some styles right and also we're gonna have um, a button touchable opacity and here it will have style button on press uh, on publish on publish let's import the touchable opacity come on and here let's define a text like uh, text uh, publish we need to define a state for our uh, description uh, to hold it somewhere so let's define const description set description equal use state initial status is gonna be empty string the value will be the description on text change we need to call set description styles dot text input save save say my name say my name come on refreshing why, why it's so uh, slow on publish is not defined of course it's not defined because we didn't define it on publish Yeah, save. Mm. Right now we will have to go and record a video, mm, but that would start lagging. So I will do a quick hack here and say that, where is it, index? Our stack navigator uh, initial route will be create post and it should redirect automatically there. Will you? Please. Initial route name create post. Your initial route. come on or I can just comment out the home screen and yeah now we see it here so uh, I did that in order to to be able to work with the styles and to style this page properly so let's uh, let's do that just text input and button uh, okay text input I don't know let's define a width 100% why I can't see it height uh, 150 and background color I don't know white no oh, come on what's happening
Let's open again the app. Where are you? Come on. Am I did I do something wrong? Loading. Oh yeah, the the actual actually it's it's there. You see? Yeah, the only thing that probably we need the background color. Uh is not a valid style property. Col color. Save. Yeah, like that. And also some margin. I don't know. Then. Uh, the text input has number of lines. Number of lines like five. Does it work? Yeah, it works like that. Uh, and I would also like to define a placeholder. The description. The placeholder is well. The problem is that I'm writing, but nothing is happening. Uh, probably something on text change. Set description. Uh, what is the value of on text changed? On text changed. Or maybe on text changed, right? On text, there is no such things. On change, on on change text. Oh, okay, gotcha. On change text. On change. Right, like that. Yeah, right now we can write and it saves in the... In our state variable. Uh, let's go ahead and style the button. Uh, button. Uh, background color. I think it was some some kind of a pink. I'm not gonna match it perfectly, but something like that. Uh, button, button. Do you want me to create a view here? Styles. Let's save. Yeah, right now it's better. Button. Um, let's align the text to the middle. Um, Justify content, right? Justify content center, save. Or align items. Align items, save. Yeah. Um, let's add some margins to it. Margin, I would add even 20. Margin, or let's try a 10 to be the same as the text input. Margin 10 and then define a height. Height was 60, 70, somewhere there. All right. Uh, justify content center as well to align it vertically. And for the text style button text we need to make it white color white 
font uh, font size 16 font weight bold and the height can be even less 50 will be okay so yeah uh, for the container i want to space put the space between so the button will be at the bottom space between you go to the button uh, yeah yeah that's right So, um, yeah, before publishing, we need to upload the video to, uh, to the storage, uh, upload video to cloud. And after that, create, um, post in the database with API. So the first part um, is is a bit interesting because we are we um, let me check if I have something here. Yeah, we need to upload the video to S3, and S3 is the um, AWS storage solution. So to do that, we need to add a an, a new Amplify service called storage so let's call amplify add storage uh we'll select content images because we want to add uh yeah content like videos uh please provide a friendlier name tick talk uh clone bucket name yeah it's okay uh who should have access uh yeah often guest users uh let's press space for all of them like to be able to create read and delete and then enter the same create read no guest users will be able only to read and not create or update uh do you want to add lambda trigger no no not now and it should uh, add it so let's run amplify push Uh, yes, and yeah, this build is taking quite some time, but we are doing so much today, like we're implementing authentication, we're implementing the API, now we're implementing uh, the storage, cloud storage, uploading a video, so it's it's quite a lot of uh, of work. How do you feel, guys? the best people are remaining till the end of a stream yeah we're gonna wait a bit until it publishes but until then let's define the function that will take a file and upload it to uh to the storage so let's declare a function const upload to storage Range upload to storage 
and we will send it a image path a local image path from the phone and that image path we need to upload to the storage so let's put everything into a try catch uh, to make sure that there are no errors that will crash the application uh, console error error so um, before sending the file to s3 we need to get the base64 version of a file like the blob version of a file uh, into a variable and we're gonna do we're gonna get that uh, using uh, fetch uh, and we're gonna fetch the image path this will return us a file uh, from where we can take the blob version of it now wait uh, response dot blob so this blob file we can upload to s3 so s3 response is equal to await storage dot put uh, and put is for uploading files there so we need here uh, file name uh, const file name Mm, file name dot let's say mp4 so the file name goes here and after that our blob like what data we want to upload blob Uh, that's it and after that we will of course have to console log the s3 response yeah let's import the storage from um, from amplify import storage from AWS Amplify and and now we have to uh, to call this function upload to storage uh, but as you remembered um, we, we, we need the image path so we get the image path from uh, the route parameters because from our camera when we redirect we send a parameter video URI so in our create post page um, let's say whenever we um, mount, mount this component uh, for that we're gonna create a use effect we need to call the function with um, with a file URL. So to get the file URL, we need to import something else called use route to get access to uh, the route and to the route parameters. And that's uh, from React Native Navigation. React Navigation Native. Come on, Vadim navigation native so we get the route const route use route and in our use effect we call uh, upload to storage route dot params dot video am I doing uh, and the params from camera we're sending the video URI so video URI yeah that's uh, good let's fix with prettier why
use effect is not defined. Okay, we need to import use effect, of course. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and this uh go back to uh to 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 the previous version of the navigation uh because we need to actually shoot a video uh to have something to upload. So let's go here. It will go video your right. It should open our home page. So what's happening? Uh, Yarn Android. Yeah, I think we need to uh, run again Yarn Android because we installed the storage. How are you guys feeling? Less and less people. <laughs> I hope that you'll um, you'll get here in them after the live stream, because yeah, it's a lot of work. It's more than three hours, and um, but you can take it like in multiple days. Or I can say in this part of a live stream the, the pin, code, pin code of my card and nobody will steal my money because nobody will watch. That's how I should test probably. So uh, let's go to the upload here. Let's start recording. Let's stop recording. Hopefully it doesn't break. Come on, come on, come on. Stop, 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 stop. Enough, enough, enough. Chill. Mm -hmm. So let's open our debugger and see if we have anything there. Yep, I think everything worked as expected. And the response was key file name. But to be sure that it uploaded the video to um, to the cloud, let's run amplify, amplify, uh, amplify, amplify. Uh, console storage. Mm, I think it doesn't have just API console. file storage uh, view in S3. It will open the S3 service from where we'll be able to see if we actually uploaded the file. Uh, objects public, file name MP4, 300 kilobytes. Let's uh, open it and try to download and see if it uploaded correctly. Yeah. We see the video here, it uploaded correctly. It has, I think, six seconds or even more. Or, okay, <laughs> weird. So, uh, yeah, the video has been uploaded. Um, the only thing that we need to change is instead of having a file name.mp4 hard coded, we should auto generate uh, an ID for this file because whenever we upload a different file, we need a, diff a unique name. So to do that, uh, we will use the UUID uh, library uh, and P. Um. So let's uh, quickly install it. yarn add we will add it and let's import the version 4 
and for the file name we're gonna generate a, a UID which will make sure that it's a unique number uh, and we, we know that it's gonna be unique because a UID version 4 contains a timestamp in it so it's based on time so let's do U, UID version 4 dot mp4 let's save um s3 key so um yeah we need to save this file name or the key from the response because we'll go we're gonna need this key um for the video uri but yeah pro um We're gonna need this key in order to save uh, to save it to the database with the post that we're gonna save. So let's declare it here uh, const um, video key set video key use state. It's gonna be null in the beginning. Null uh, video key. So, um, in the response, let's set video key to the S3 response dot key, like that. And you, with that video key, we have everything, and with a description that we already have in state, we have everything to create a post whenever the user presses on the on publish. So we uploaded the video to the cloud. Now we need to create a post. So let's do a try, uh, catch, error, console, error. Now let's import the, um, the things from Amplify, uh, such as API and GraphQL operation. And also let's import the, um, the mutation. The mutation create post. Create post from uh, GraphQL mutations. So here const uh, response await api.graphql GraphQL op operation create post and we need to send the input, right? Input, new post. Uh, we need to define it. Uh, we can define it outside the try. Const new post is equal to. So what does a post in our case have? Schema, not schema here. Uh, amplify backend API schema. So a post has a video array, a description, and a user ID. So yeah, let's take this. Oh, and a song ID. Mm -hmm. Is it required? Yeah, it's required. I think we're <laughs> we're gonna just hard code it. Uh, and if you want to implement, you can implement a song picker, like, I don't know, a drop down or a search bar where you will search a song and based on the selection, you will add a song ID. Uh, but we are gonna, uh, so it has video URI. It has description, which is the description from uh, the state, um, it has user ID and song ID, user ID and song ID. So for the song ID, uh, as we said, for now, we're just gonna uh, hard code the song ID um, that we have here, list songs, items, ID. Uh, Yeah, 
this is an ID of a song. The user ID, the user ID, uh, we will take it from a current authenticated user. So we will need auth as well here. Uh, let's add it here because we need to do some uh, queries beforehand. User info is equal to auth current authenticated user uh, and we need to await of course. So the user ID is user info dot attributes dot sub if you remember. Do you remember? And for the video for, for the video right the Problem is that at the moment we don't have a video URI. At the moment we have only a video key and later on, based on this key, we will know how to fetch the video URI from the database. So perfectly, we would have to change uh, the name from video URI in our, data, in our API to video key to reflect the actual uh, data. But right now, let's just write in the video URI our um, our video key. It's not a full URI, it's just a key. So, um, but we also need to check if we actually have a video key because if vi there is no video key, let's console warn video is not yet uploaded and let's return. Because if we press on publish too soon, the video is not yet uploaded. So we need to wait a bit uh, until we have a video key. So for a new post, we have, we have everything. Publish is a sync. I don't know. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, hopefully we will not have any errors right now. I can promise, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and save and see if it works. Oh, and also we need to do some navigation. We need to navigate away from this uh, page to the home screen. Um, use navigation. Const navigation equal use navigation. Let's add a new line here. So after we upload it, let's do navigation, navigate home, go home. So, okay, let's start. Let's start recording. Let's stop recording. It should go to the next page. Uh, it should upload a video with a random name. Uh, let's make sure that that happened. Yep, we see here some digits.mp4 and this is the new file that it uploaded. And now if we say uh, test, test uploading from uh, application. And if we press, press publish, let's hope that it works. It went to home, uh, why it went here? Okay, that's not the most important, uh, we'll check that but now let's go to our that uh, server here and list posts uh, items items uh, id description video uri 
let's run so we have test uploading for application yeah our video is has successfully been uploaded um yeah that's awesome uh right now let's let's think why it went oh because yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it went here because um if we look at our navigation in index uh, from create post it went to home but our home navigation the last uh, the last screen that we were in the home navigation which is our bottom tab navigator was this create video so we need to specify exactly on which screen so navigate home dot uh, screen i think uh also home i mean like go to the bottom type navigator but to this part to to this home and let's try to save uh let's try to record again hopefully it will not crash because it's so laggy stop 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 please 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 yeah Let's write some comment here. Mm, has a possible unhandled promise. This time it might not work. yeah it went to uh to home it went to home to, to the home page so if we refresh our flat list and currently we cannot refresh it just by dragging uh, down but if we open again the tiktok application right now we should see the new posts but the videos will not be displayed because we don't have a uri there we have uh, video keys. So here we see test uploading for application from a user with this random avatar that we created. The same here, uh, it has something uh, there. So let's uh, go ahead and display properly the, the video based on the key from, the sto from our storage. We just know the key, we don't know yet the URI. So we need to fetch a URI based on that key. So let's open source components post index. Somewhere here. So get, uh, let's define a uh, function, get video URI. So if um, if post dot video URI, let's check if it's already an URI, then we don't need to do anything. So if it starts with, uh, I don't know, HTTP, then let's just return post dot video URI. However, if it doesn't start with HTTP, meaning it's not a URL already, that means it's a key. So we need to, um, it's an async function. So we need to uh, get this URI from the storage. Let's import uh, somewhere here, the storage. Import storage from uh, AWS Amplify, AWS Amplify, all right, um, and const response equal await storage dot get, and we get a post, post dot video 
come on with you video you're right and this is the key of uh, the storage so let's just console log right now to to see what's the structure of that response uh okay did update did it update did it update save no no not this one um oh we are not calling it get video uri uh uri get video uri save save me your location uh your array match is not a function you array match 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 uh what's that um i don't know const your right echo get video your right Mm, I need to return something, so I will return. Your array match. What's happening there? So yeah, uh, all right. So yeah, the it just returns our, as a link that um, this response. So we can actually say return await storage so this is the link save and you're right much is not a function what's going on you arrive match is not a function Mm, what's going on? Console log URI. So where is the problem arising? Uh, oh, it's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. Await. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because, mm, yeah, let's we'll probably have to just declare a, a state variable because receiving this is, um, is asynchronous so let's do video uri uh, set video uri use state initially it will be like this so we let's call this function in a use effect use effect So, um, get video URI. So basically in that function, we're not gonna return, um, but we're gonna set it to state, set video URI to post video URI. And here we're gonna set it again to await storage like like this and yeah here we call it uri is video uri from our state let's save and hopefully now it should work 
So the first video, possible and handle promise rejection. No, everything is fine. So we saw that we waited a bit until the video has download has been downloaded. And this is the video that we uploaded from the application. The next one again is a video we uploaded from, from the application. And if we scroll, these are already the videos that we manually uploaded. So as you can see, yeah, it took a little bit of time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of moving parts. Like we need to handle like uploading a file to, to the cloud using S3 and the storage service from AWS also to create the, uh, the post in the database, uh, then to fetch it, to display it, to render a lot of moving parts, but hopefully it's, uh, it's clear and you manage to make it working mm, because I'm gonna. Uh, add and commit git commit minus m uh, create post and storage yeah uh, that's let's have a look yeah we upload video to s3 everything is working fine as expected uh, the video is attached to the user that is currently uh, signed up. So if um, if you register a different user and upload a video, then we're going to see a different avatar here and we're going to see a different username here. So everything is dynamically attached and connected. So uh, yeah, with that said, I think we have... Um, a pretty solid uh, TikTok application. And of course, it's uh, far from uh, the original TikTok application because that one has a lot of uh, functionalities, a lot of features, but it also it has a lot of developers working at it and not just a random dude uh, <laughs> on the internet doing it in two days in uh, two live streams of three hours each. So hopefully you understand that I'm trying to to develop only the most important parts. And these parts make a complete application. I mean, right now you can authenticate, uh, you can create posts, you can see posts, you can uh, upload different uh, videos. Uh, everything is on the cloud. And to be honest, it's uh, pretty scalable with um, uh, and this, I, I'm pretty sure, can handle uh, hundreds of thousands of users uh, uh, because everything is serverless behind the scenes. And um, yeah, it's also pretty cost effective. So, guys, I hope that you learned uh, something new from these videos. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me now. If uh, anyone is still here and not tired, uh, thank you very much for staying uh, until the end. If you're watching this uh, afterwards, uh, also thank you very much for watching uh, this long live stream. And I really hope that you took something valuable from it. And yeah, let me know down below in the comments uh, what I should do next week. Should I continue with a TikTok and um, improve and add more features? Like, I don't know, like comments, maybe video filters, uh, liking, pagination, anything. Or you're interested in starting a new project. Maybe you have something in mind that you want to clone. That, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, Vadim. I am actually following your Twitter clone, uh, but I s got stuck with the Amplify part. I never use it and I expected you to explain it. Um, that's great that you are following t Twitter. I think Twitter was uh, our second application or third. Um, yeah, I, pr I explained it as far as I could in a live stream of three hours. So you can see what I'm doing and do the same thing. Uh, also check out the documentation. They have pretty good documentation. Um, 
and you can learn a lot from um, just from reading the documentation. Also, there are a lot of uh, free tutorials on the internet that you can find, but I am planning to do more specific short tutorials with Amplify. For example, like 10 minutes video to how to set up authentication or uh, things like that very specific uh, that will help you um, move forward when you get stuck during these live builds. So I'm planning that out. Thank you very much. <coughs> All right, guys. <coughs> I think we should call it a day and I'm pretty happy with what we have managed to build in um, during two videos. I am looking forward to see your results as well. So uh, when you finish, uh, please uh, shoot a video of your application at the end and publish it on our Discord channel. Uh, I'll be happy to, to see it and give you feedback. And also, don't stop here. I always encourage you to go one step uh, forward, like implement something more. For example, uh, implement a way to add songs and to select a song when, um, when creating a post. Implement a way um, to... Uh, add likes uh, to the posts and uh, comments and shares um, to add more information, to edit your profile pictures. Like there is so many things that you can do and you can take as an example the things that we already built because most of the things uh, we already built. For example, how to create a new page, we already did. So you go back to that part, you check how we did and you just adjust it for your need how to create uh, a model, how to fetch a user, how to update a user. Everything we did, you just need to implement in different places and you can get a pretty um, functional application. Um, yeah, and that's actually where most of the learning happens. So guys, without further ado, I think it's three and a half hours. I'm pretty, pretty tired, but also very excited and quite happy with the result. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave, um, leave a like, share it with one friend, uh, subscribe to the channel, of course, and let me know down below what are you interested uh, to see in the next videos. So guys, as usual, also um, thanks to uh, Pruyank, I hope I pronounce your name, for the donation. Uh, I really appreciate it. So guys, see you on Discord and let's continue our chat there. As usual, take care, stay hydrated and write clean code. Bye bye guys. Let's end.